And that is what life is like in the Leilipi world. I found the compressor sets are very picky eaters. I only could feed them frozen foods. Now this is their largest spawn today. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my February 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one. And these guys are my breeding pair of Neolamprologus Leilupi. As you can see, there are a number of fry in here and some of them are starting to color up and get that typical yellow coloration. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this tank this month is because in my full fish room tour for the year 2022, I showed you guys this aquarium and you would have seen that the female was in the top left-hand corner of the aquarium. The male was chasing her around and uh, harassing her quite a bit. But now I wanted to show you guys what it's like with these guys because they have uh, their bond is reformed and they want to spawn again. Now that's really good timing because as you would have seen uh, in past videos over the last few weeks, I've got three brand new five foot aquariums that I'm going to be moving fish into. And the fry you see in this tank will actually go out, go up into the top row of my sump system in their own grow out aquarium. And my Leilupi breeding pair will be able to spawn again and raise their fry without uh, having to defend them from the older generations in this aquarium. So I just wanted to show you guys the behavior, how my Leilupi breeding pair are doing at the moment. They've settled in, she's no longer hovering at the back of the aquarium and uh, the male has accepted her once again. It's just the life of Neolamprologus Leilupi. They go through stages where they will fight and not get along and then they'll, their, fond, their bond will form again and they'll be okay. Now you can see the males come out and looking at the female there. You can see how she shimmers her body, how she swims, kind of sudden burst. That's her submitting to his dominance and he won't chase her. However, if she does try to swim away from him, he will chase her and that's where the fights will start. So as long as she does that shimmer, that body shimmer, it's like she's submitting to his dominance, everything is all right. And that is what life is like in the Leilupi world. So I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the video and the footage that you saw in my full fishing tour for 2022, which was posted in January of 2022, and this video a month later. So yeah, their behavior is quite different. Anyway guys, on to the next tank. And this is the next tank getting an update this month. And that's because there are some changes to the aquarium. One, I've added the Neolamprologus similis back in with the Alto Lamprologus compressor seps. When, they, when I bought the Neolamprologus similis and the Alto Lamprologus compressor seps, I put them in quarantine. I bought them on the same day. They went into the same tank and spent their quarantine time together. Now, I had the Neolamprologus similis in a tank by themselves in an attempt to breed them. At the time, I thought they were a pair, a male and female. However, it's turned out they're both male, unfortunately. Now, because they weren't doing anything in that aquarium, I decided to move them out, move some fry into the aquarium that they were in and move them back in with my Alto Lamprologus compressor seps. And the reason for moving the similis in this aquarium is because I basically had nowhere else to put the similis. And I know that they do okay with the Alto Lamprologus compressor seps for the time being. My compressor seps aren't large, they're still uh, growing, they're basically still fry, re realistically, they're still fry, and uh, the similis are exactly the same size as my compressor seps. Uh, if the compressor seps were fully grown, I probably wouldn't have put shell dwelling cichlids in with them. The other reason is I wanted more dither fish in this aquarium to help bring out the compressor seps. If you've seen on my past videos with this aquarium, I added the Ventralis Tritica to this aquarium to hopefully bring out the Alto Lamprologus compressor seps more. They, the compressor seps are very shy fish. They tend to stick to the back of the aquarium. And I said to you guys, I've added the Ventralis Tritica to bring out the compressor seps. Basically, the compressor seps, they would see that there's no fish in the aquarium. If there was no other fish in the aquarium, they would think that there are predators about and they would be inclined to hide more. When they see fish in the aquarium with them, they will feel more at ease and would think that there's no predators around that will make them feel a little bit more comfortable and they'll be more inclined to come out into the open. Now over the last two to three weeks, basically since I did my full fish room tour video for 2022, I have noticed a change in behavior. In that video, I did mention that I wasn't seeing the compressor steps as much as I expected by, by now because the Ventralis Tritica had been in this aquarium for uh, about a month and a half at that point. Uh, maybe two months. So I did expect to see the Alto Lamprologus compressor steps more by then. And in that video, I said uh, that they, they really are still hiding, uh, although they were coming out a little bit. Now, however, since my full fishing tour, I see the Alto Lamprologus compressor steps a whole lot more. 
see basically there are two on video right now that pretty much the entire time and the largest one unfortunately is hiding again basically because I've got the camera right in front of this aquarium however I do see the largest one a lot more now so I'm really pleased with how this aquarium has gone adding dither fish to this tank really has helped make the Alto Lamprologus compressor steps feel at ease they feel way more comfortable than they did when they were in this tank by themselves and they're actually also eating better the Ventralis Tritica they're very aggressive eaters they like they're always in there first picking off whatever food I put in the aquarium and that just creates like a feeding frenzy in the tank prompting the Alto Lamprologus compressor steps to also in get in on the feast so uh, not having any of the fish in here I found the compressor sets are very picky eaters and I was basically only could feed them uh, frozen foods such as mysa shrimp or brine shrimp however since adding the ventralis tritica to the aquarium the compressor sets see the tritica go into this feeding frenzy and that then drives the compressor sets to feed on whatever is put in the aquarium and they're feeding on some very high quality pellets now as well which is great because i really want to vary the diet of these fish i just don't want them eating the same food over and over again because they might miss out on some key vitamin and minerals that are found in different foods so i'm really happy with how this tank is going that said i do want to move these ventralis tritica out of this aquarium and into one of the brand new five footers but I'm concerned that that will undo all the good work I've done in bringing out the compressor steps into the open and making them feel more at ease. For one, it will stress the compressor steps out when I try to catch the Ventralis Tritica. And two, once they're gone, the compressor steps might start to uh, become introverts again and basically hide. And I don't, really don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna have to play it by ear and see how we go with this aquarium. But so far, I'm really happy with the progress that I've made with the Alto Lamprologus compressor steps and their behavior. And this is the next tank getting an update this month. Now, you can see on camera, there are, they are some fry. And these fry, you might recognize what they are if you've been on my channel for a while now. They are Alto Lamprologus calvus fry. This is the white variety. So these fry have come from my white breeding pair. And you would have seen in last month's video, my full fishing tour for 2022, that I said, my breeding pair of white outer lampologus calvus were on their ninth spawn. I think it's their ninth spawn, I've lost count now, but uh, I said that they were on a spawn and these are the fry that were uh, in the parent shell when I filmed that video. Now this is their largest spawn today. I actually caught 147 fry out of that aquarium and put them in here. So I was really amazed by that. That's the record by about 40. So really pleased that the spawn sizes are increasing and they're spawning quite regularly. Uh, sometimes they spawn once a month, uh, but generally on average it's about once every two months. So these guys are only about two weeks free swimming. And like I say in all my videos, you can see a lot of them are still sitting on the bottom of the tank on that crushed coral uh, from when I used to keep reef aquariums. That's some leftover crushed coral. They're just a sprinkling on the bottom of the tank and yeah with these guys you want to keep the bottom of the tank super clean see this is, tank does not have a light on it like my other crams you can see how the brightness difference there uh, this tank just gets lit by the ambient light in the fish room the other thing is there's no bristlenose catfish in here bristlenose catfish with calvus fry will stress the calvus fry out the bristlenose catfish obviously sit on the bottom of the tank calvus fry sit on the bottom of the tank as well uh, for a number of months they have long rest periods at the bottom of the tank, as you can see here. And if you have bristlenose catfish going through all those fry, it will stress them out all the time. They'll be scared constantly. The other thing, bristlenose catfish are nocturnal. The calvus fryer will not get any rest. So do not add bristlenose catfish with your calvus or alto lamprologus compressor steps fry. That is what I recommend. I say it in all my videos. Sorry for my long-term subscribers. You would hear me repeat this constantly, but I need to drive home that message. And you won't need bristlenose catfish in these tanks anyway because you don't have a light on these aquariums. So algae growth will be at a minimum and it will help keep the tank cleaner. So anyway, there you go guys. These, these are two weeks old and they're doing quite well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop in some mi live microworms, get them up into the water column, get them feeding, and then you'll see the sheer volume of fry that are in this aquarium. Okay, so I'm trying to stay away from the aquarium and not get too close. So really I wanna scare them. You can see the fry going into the water column now, going higher up in the tank and feeding off the live microworms. So there are a lot of fry at the, t at the back of the tank as well. 
and yeah, I'm just trying to get them into the water column so you can see how many there are. Now I'm filming on my mobile phone because it is a lot of work to film with my DSLR up this high in the fish room on the top right tanks on my sump system. So it's just a little bit easier for me to film on my mobile phone here. There you go guys, they're doing really well. I've actually considered separating the, the, the breeding pair of my white tail tail Empelogus calvus because I've got so many fry, especially calvus fry, because I've also got uh, black Altail Empelogus that are breeding as well. And I've got hundreds of these guys, so uh, I don't want to overwhelm uh, myself with just calvus. Although they are an amazing fish to breed and obviously sell, they are, there's a big demand for these guys, so it is a good problem to have when you've got so many calvus in your fish room. But I do want to slow down the amount I'm pumping out because I just don't want to be in the position I'm almost in now where I'm running out of aquariums. So I have considered separating the male from the female on my white Atalampologus calvus breeding pair. Keep her in the aquarium by just putting a divider in there just so uh, they don't spawn for a, a couple of weeks because uh, I've got so many young fry around this size. But yeah, again, good problem to have. There you go guys, my white Atalampologus calvus fry, the youngest spawn I have in the fish room. 147 of them. So there you have it guys, my February 2022 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.